Welcome to the seventh section in which we'll focus on the system testing. In this section, we are going to take a look at the implementing the test for the API, activities and identity service. And by the test, I mean both unit and integration or so-called end-to-end tests. And later on, we'll discuss the other possible implementations of these tests. In this video, we'll take care of testing our API. So we are going to take a look at writing the unit test for controllers and the integration test. As you can see, I have already added three test projects here. And I did this simply by calling .NET new xUnit. And this one will create a test project using the xUnit as our default framework. Of course, I added this project into our solution, as you can see. And besides, I also included here a few packages. So we'll be using the Fluent assertions, so we can write our test in a more fluent way. You will see how. Also the test host, that will use this package for the integration testing. This one will allow us running our startup in memory, our API in memory or our service. And I also included mock you for mock. Let's start with writing our API tests. I'll create a new folder here. Now let's call it the unit for the unit tests. And below I will create a new folder and let's call it the controllers. So we'll write some unit tests for the controllers. Let's start with the home controller test. Let's say that we like to test our home controller. So we want to ensure that this action will return this content with this string hello from actual API. So how do we actually write such tests? At first, let's create a new method and this one will name home controller get should return string content. The naming of the test is an important part. Just make sure that you follow some convention and that the test name says uh, what are you testing? So we don't have to get into implementation details of the test method. And we'll mark this method with the fuck attribute because this one is being used by the XUnit for marking the tests. And here, let's create a new controller by just creating new controller instance like this. And we'll add the using to our API. Now we'll have another section. So as you should know, we have the arrange, act and assert. So this is our arrange then our act, so let's call the result equals controller get. And finally the assertion. So let's say we have the content result, it will be result as content result, so we'll cast it to the content result. Let's add the using there. And let's use our fluent assertion. So it's first, let's say content result should not be null. So we want to ensure that our casting went fine. We could also do it in a way that, let's say, result should be of should be of type and then pass our type. But it's just another way around. And here we want to ensure that the content result content should be equivalent to actually this string content. All right. So this is our test. Let's remove this coda here. Okay, let's run our test from the Visual Studio Code. We could also run it by typing .NET test in our console and by navigating to the test project. And as you can see, the test is about to run. And below we can see that the build succeeded and is discovering the tests and the test has passed successfully. Okay, let's create another one test, a little bit more sophisticated. And let's say we call it activities controller tests. Here, let's create a new test method and I'll call it activities controller post should return accepted, which means that we'll actually test our activities controller and we'll test this method here. So as you can see, we need to pass the arguments to our constructor and how we can do it. Well, we can do it by using the mocks. We don't want to actually create a new instances of these objects and mix our uh, unit test with some existing business logic, we just want to provide the mocks. So let's start with creating bus client mock. It will be a new mock client of I bus client type. Now let's create the repository mock. So I'll just call it activity repository mock. Oh, let's add the using here to the mock you. And it will be new mock of I activity repository type. Now let's create a new controller. So we'll say act controller equals new activities controller. And here we'll provide our mocks. So the first one will be the bus client mock dot object and then the activity repository mock object. Now we want to create a user ID. 
because we, want, we have to pass the user ID as well. And we can do it the following. Let's say we have the new user ID, just some arbitrary GUID. And here we'll set up the controller context just by creating a new controller context like this. And here we'll just create a new type, new object of the HTTP context. It will be of type default HTTP context like this. And we'll just create here the user new claims principal because we want to make sure that our user will be actually assigned because we are using our uh, user identity within our controller to assign the user ID automatically. So we have to do it this way. And we just create a new claims identity by providing the new collection of claims. So new claim array. Okay. And here we can just say that we want to have a new claim and it will be the claim types dot name and we'll pass our user ID as a string. So user ID go it to string. And let's have the name for our user. I'll just call it a test. Oh, sorry, the, te the authentication. So let's call it the test authentication. Okay. And now we can actually send our command. So let's say new create activity command will provide our ID. So just some random GUID for our create activity command and the user ID that we created above. And finally, let's go to the um, arrange, sorry, the act phase. So at first, result equals to await. So we can change this method to be async task because we're testing the asynchronous method. So when I await our controller that post and pass our command. And finally, we want to verify that everything went fine. So at first, let's do this count on result again. But this time, we want to make sure that the result is the accepted result. And we want to verify that the result is should not be null. And finally, let's verify that our content result location header is valid. So we can just do it like this. We want to verify that location is equivalent to the activities controller location that is being set in the post method. So it's activities controller and this one accepted. Okay, so let's run the test now and see if it works. The test passed successfully. For the integration testing, we'll actually implement this in the next video because the integration testing will be pretty much similar for all of these services. In this video, we implemented the test for our API. At first, a simple test and then a more sophisticated one using the MockU and the Fluent Assertions.